Okay, so I've got now my um, my three meter topo lines just in Blacksburg and my 10 meter topo lines which include the area around Blacksburg and what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to I'm going to style my data so these 10 meter topo lines I'm gonna color them pretty light We'll start by just fading them out a bit, making them a kind of a light gray that we might change that later on, but for now we'll just do that. Um, and we'll keep them um, as a solid line, but we'll make it a bit thinner, just like that. Okay, so you can still see them there, but they're quite pale. They're, they're pretty difficult to see. You can kind of see them a little bit if I zoom in. But we'll keep it like that for now. We'll see how it shows up in the uh, in the um, in the layout view. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and turn those off for now, so that things don't get too packed up. We're also gonna turn off the roads and sidewalks, and just try and save our our file a little bit of headache trying to load all that stuff. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to style our Blacksburg specific 3 meter topo lines and we're actually going to color them according to their elevation. So that will give us a little bit of a sense of what the topography is doing around here. So we're going to double click into them to access the style. And then we're going to change this to graduated this time. So graduated takes in basically number um, values and we'll translate those number values into um, visual data. Uh, it'll, it'll visualize them. So elevation is the number that I want, and then the symbol we're going to change to... So we'll, we'll just keep it as a line for now. The color ramp, we're just going to do grays, and then we're going to classify. So you see these different classification categories. Um, we have equal count, which means there's an equal number of um, there's an equal number of data points in each of these buckets. But you can see that the ranges vary widely, right? Like these only have maybe 20 meters or so between them, whereas this one has over 100. So I don't really want to do that because it'll represent the the um, elevations in sort of a skewed way. Instead, what I want to do is an equal interval. So now you can see the equal interval means that there's a, the same number of meters in each of these ranges. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more accurate. I'm also going to bump up the classes. That's the number of basically data breaks. I'm going to bump that up to 10 just to give us a bit more granularity in the way that the um, topo lines are being represented. And I'm going to click apply. All right, so now we can see there's a little bit of different colors showing up. We can see the darker ones are higher and the paler ones are lower. I think I want to invert that. I think I want the lighter colors to be at the top and the darker colors to be at the bottom. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say invert color ramp and I'm going to apply again. All right, now we see the darker colors at the bottom and then the paler colors up at the top of the ridge lines. And you can kind of play around with this stylistically and see, you know, kind of what you want to show, what, what story you want to tell. Um, I think the black might be a little bit too harsh to see things clearly, um, but green might be a nice color, or I could go with this vidrous color ramp so that the, the mountain tops, maybe we'll make those purple, and then the low areas in the city are going to be um, yellow, and then Basically, with, with a color ramp, the more different stops, the more colors it goes through, the more easily you can visualize subtle changes in data. So with this one, we're not getting a whole lot of massive, uh, obvious changes. We have more subtle changes in the topography here. So I, I think a color, um, a color ramp with a lot of different stops on it is probably a little bit easier to visualize these differences. Um, all right, so now we're starting to see kind of an interesting story about the valleys and the, the high points in Blacksburg. 
and we can see again here the lower values are yellow and the higher values are purple. So I'm going to say OK there, and I'm going to kind of pan over and take a look at what's going on here in the topography of Blacksburg. And you can see again I've got the rivers shown here in blue. And you can see that the rivers pretty, pretty, um, pretty obviously follow these low points. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and drag this down below the buildings layers so that we can see the buildings a little bit more clearly there. And uh, yeah, we're starting to get a pretty good picture of Blacksburg. I think I want to bump up, maybe maybe bump up the waterways a little bit so they show up a bit more clearly. And then I think I might turn down the colors of the topography lines a little bit so that they are not quite as bright. And then I'll turn on the the wider topo and we'll kind of start to paint a picture about topography in Blacksburg. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit and then check back in. Okay, so you can see here I've changed a few of the things graphically. I've made um, the less dense topography match the same color scheme as the dense topography and that's pretty easy to do. Um, I knew the, dent the less dense, the 10 meter topography, had a wider range so I went in and I styled it with the same color scheme and I let it set the range for the other one. Um, what I did is I, I did the same thing, the equal interval, the 10 classes and then I went down here to style and I said save style. So I saved it out in my data folder and then I loaded it into this other one so that this one would have the same range, the same topo range as, um, so you can see it's the same numbers as the other one. So that's good. So then the colors, you know, they get denser within the boundaries of Blacksburg, but it's the exact same color, meaning the exact same uh, things. And then you can see I also changed the color of the buildings a little bit. I didn't really like that pink of uh, VT, so I just changed the buildings to have kind of a red out outline. Um, and I also added in the water a little bit more distinctively. So I added kind of a, a black outline and the water is white. Okay, so we've got this all set. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did in the last tutorial. We're going to create a new print layout for it. Um, what you can also do, which I might do here, is um, Layout Manager, and I would take this and I would duplicate it, and I would call this VT, let's call it VT Topo, okay? And one thing to note um, is that when I reopen that VT Roads, it is going to update the layers to the way that I've changed them, so it's no longer going to look the same as it did before. So what I'll show you in just a second what you can do to prevent that to kind of like bake in the layout that you had the way you wanted it. All right, so you can see it reloaded the exact same part of the map in the same place. Obviously for this new one, I want the map to be a little bit more zoomed out. So I'm going to go ahead and change the scale. I'm also going to uh, and the change in the scale should automatically change this numerical scale as well. I'm going to update the legend, and um, I'm also going to make sure that I, when I click on the map canvas, you can scroll down and say lock layers. So I'm going to check that, and lock styles for layers as well. Check that, and now even if I go back and change something in my map, it'll still be the way it is here in the um, in the layout. Now if you remove a layer that was in the layout, it may delete the layer in the layout as well, so be a little bit careful with that. But this is a way that you can change, so for instance, if you wanted to show multiple maps side by side, and you wanted to show one map that had the topo colored and one map beside it that had the topo just gray, you could lock the layer style for the color topo, create a new map, restyle the topo in your um, in your digital map here and then in your print layout just reload that second map and it'll adjust to be the new style that you've made. Um, so that's that's one kind of useful way to show multiple maps side by side from one um, from one map file. So I'm going to go ahead and um, restyle these things 
All right, and there we go. So we've got the scale updated. We've got the legend updated. Um, I updated the data source as well. I added USGS to that, which is where we got the topography from. And uh, I updated the title. So we're good to go. We can go ahead and export this. Again, I'm going to export it as a PDF. I also updated the scale there. Um, and we'll do VT Topo. That sounds fine. Um, We'll export as vector. That's probably good. You can zoom into it. You can always down save it later. It's probably going to be a pretty large file exporting as vector data, but that's all right. And that's it. There you go. That's how you integrate topography into your QGIS.